Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about server-side Blazor that's running on .NET Core 3.0. The difference between server-side Blazor and client-side Blazor is that server-side Blazor, it maps the DOM on the server side and syncs it with the DOM on the client side using WebSockets and the WebSocket technology used by Microsoft is called Signal R. So in today's exercise, we're going to create a server side CRUD application that uses server side Blazor to update, delete, insert and list data coming from a database. So let's get started. We're going to be using Visual Studio 2019. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to filter on Blazor and I will get this template here. This template allows you to create both server side and client side. At the moment, if you want to create client side, you have to install the preview version of .NET Core 3.1. But for the server side, you don't need to have the preview version of .NET Core 3.1. Let's click on next here. And I'm going to give my app the name Blazor on server and I will place it in a folder closer to the root of my file system. Click on create and here I will make sure that I have ASP.NET Core 3.0 and the only option I have is Blazor server app. By the way, I do have .NET Core 3.1 preview and if I choose that I will also see this option and this option is the client side version but I'm focused on the server side today so I'm going to go back to 3.0 and select blazor server app and go create since I want to work with entity framework I'm going to create a bogus model for a student class so I shall create a folder called models and in that models folder I'm going to create a student class. So here it is. I created a models folder and put in it a student class. So my student class is going to look like this. It's composed of the student ID, first name, last name, and school. I'm resolving the namespaces. Since I'm going to be talking to SQL Server, there are some added packages that I need to install. These are the packages that need to be installed. Microsoft Entity Framework Core, Design, SQL Server, and SQL Server Design. So I will go to a DOS prompt and I will install these three packages. The next thing I need is a connection string for my application. I'm going to choose here to overwrite. All right, so in app settings, I'll add a connection string here that will determine the name of my database and what kind of database I'll be using. So I'm going to be using local DB. The name of my database is going to be called college DB. The next thing I need to do is to create a context class. So I'll create in the data folder here, I'll add a new class and I'm going to call this class the school DB context. Now the school DB context, it declares a DB set of students, which we'll call students. And this is the constructor. It passes the options to the base class. And this is where we're seeding four students. The next step is to add some code in the configure services method that links the connection string to the context class. And that will be done in the startup.cs file in the configure services method. Now, at this point, even though we did all the plumbing for the database, 
Our application doesn't use a database yet because we haven't done the migrations and we haven't updated the database. Now, before we do that, let us see what kind of server-side Blazor application we have. Let's start this. Now, with server-side Blazor, you get a UI that looks very, very similar to the client-side Blazor. If you click on these, you've got a counter. If you click on Click Me, it increments the counter, fetch data. We'll go and grab some information on temperature. Let us have a look at what this fetch data does and how it works. So let's go back to our code and you will find that the fetch data logic is centered around this fetch data razor file. So let's open this fetch data razor file and you will see here that we have a table and we're iterating through weather forecast objects. The forecasts object is an array of weather forecast objects. And in here, there is this on initialize async method. This on initialize async method calls a forecast service. Now, where's this forecast service coming from? Well, it's being injected here through dependency injection. So there's a service out there called weather forecast service. Let's have a look at this weather forecast service. You will find it under data. This weather forecast service, it's got a static array of different conditions, freezing, bracing, chilly, and so on. And then it's got a method here called get forecast async. Now this get forecast async is the same method that's being called down here. It takes a date object. So let's go back and look at the service and sure this takes a date object. And here it is generating random weather forecast objects. This service, weather forecast service, if you go to the startup.cs, over here it is declared as a singleton. So when we create our own service, we have to go into this configure services method and register it as a singleton class so that it becomes available across our application. So now we have done the plumbing for our database. We should be able to do a migration and actually create the physical database. Let's do that. So I'm going to execute this command in order to create migrations. I'll go into a DOS window here and execute this command. It should create for us a migration called M1 and put it into data migrations folder. So let's close this and sure enough, in here, we have our migrations file. The next step is to update the database. So we can go back into the command prompt and do a .NET EF database update. And that should create for us the data in the database. Now, we need to create a service. This is the way it works. So in our data folder here, I'll create a new class called student service. And in this student service, I shall create methods for each of the CRUD operations. So this is my student service. Let me resolve all these namespaces first. And that's about it. So this is the constructor. And I'm dependency injecting the context class, which I will use in my service. This method here returns for me a list of all the students asynchronously. Using my context object, I'm accessing all the students and returning the result as an async list. The second method gets students by ID. So it takes as an argument the ID, goes and finds that student with that particular ID and returns a student object. The insert student async method takes as an argument the student, adds the student to the database and saves it. The update student async method takes an ID and a student object, finds the ID, finds the student with the appropriate ID, which returns a student object, 
updates the student object and saves it in the database. And the delete, all it takes is an ID. It finds the student that pertains to that ID and then removes the student from the student's collection and saves in the database. So this is a standard class that does all the CRUD operations. The only difference is it's a service. Since we do have a service, we need to register it as a singleton. Therefore, we're going to go to the startup class and then register it as a singleton. So this will register that class as a singleton. So let's close this, save it, and now we should be able to use our service. So we're going to take one of these files, fetch data, copy it, and paste it, and rename it to student. So I'm going to come here, rename this one to students, S-T-U-D-E-N-T-S. And I'm going to delete everything in it. And then I have my own code. Here, I'm importing these namespaces. Now, the actual project of mine is not called server blazer ef. It's called blazer on server. So I'm going to change this name to blazer on server. And this one too. So this is nothing but imports. And here I'm injecting the student service so that I can use it within my page. Down here, I have very similar code to the fetch data code that we looked at before. I'm declaring a list of student objects here. And then on this on initialize async method, which is the starting point for our page, I'm going to call a method called load. And this method called load, it uses the student service to call the get students async method that basically reads all the students. Let us see if our application works. Control F5. And if we enter slash students, we should be able to see our students. And there it goes, it's actually working. It's pulling the students from the database. The beauty of server-side Blazor is you can talk directly to the database. And what's happening is that signal R is being used to update the DOM. Let's look at something. Let's go and hit F12 here in our browser. If we go to the network tab here and refresh the page, you're going to get this one line. And what is this negotiate? This is basically web sockets. It's a web socket pipe between the browser and the server and everything is wrapped around that. So you can see here that web sockets are being used. Let us continue our exercise here and implement the other remaining CRUD operations, which is insert, update, and delete. But let's start by adding a menu item to our navigation here for students. That means that we need to go into the shared folder and update this nav menu razor with a new menu item. Let's open this up. This is the new menu item. It points to the student's endpoint. So now if we run our application one more time, we should be able to see that there is a student's tab here that takes us to the students. Let us add data. So down here, I'm going to add some instance variables for the four columns of data that we want to add student ID, first name, last name, and school. And then I will add a simple insert form. This will be the insert form. And it will display only when the student's array is not equals to null. This is how you can bind these variables to these fields. And when the button over here is clicked, it's going to call the insert method. So now if we run our application, click on students, we should see this button. And when we click on the button, we'll see the form. And it just behaves like before. After we insert data also, there's another thing we want to do is 
let's say we want to insert some data, I'm going to send enter four A's and four B's and four C's here. Click on insert. We want this form to disappear, which means that after we insert, we want to set the mode to be none. This will cause it to disappear. Let's add the forms for updating and deleting. So we're going to add this code down here. And this is going to be for both edit and delete. We're going to save the student ID in a hidden field, just like you do in HTML. I mean, this is pretty much very close to HTML. So that when it submits back to the server, the server knows which row to update. And this is pretty much the same. We have placeholders and input fields for first name, last name, and school. And there are two buttons. There's an update button and there's a delete button. So when the update button is clicked, we want to call the update function. When the delete button is clicked, we want to call the delete function. So we're missing these two functions. So here are our two update and delete functions. The update function instantiates a new student object and calls the update student async method, passing it the ID and the student object. And we know that that service knows how to talk to the database directly. And then when it's all done, it will set the mode to none. The same here. When the delete function is called, it will call the delete student async method in our service pass the student ID, clear the fields, reload the data in our form, and set the mode to none. Now, the only problem we have is that we don't have a mechanism for selecting what we want to delete or update. So let's go back and run our application. Everything seems to be working, except that how do we select any of these? There must be a way of selecting them so that we can delete them or do something with them. Now we can add an event handler to the row itself so that you can click on the row and then we can display something in a form that you can update or delete. In order to add an event handler to the row, we'll go to the row in our code here and we'll add the following. On click equals to, so at the row level, we can put this event handler and what this says is when the row is clicked, we're going to call the show method and pass it the student ID. So now what remains is for us to have a show method and this is what our show method looks like. It's going to take an ID, make a call to the service to get us a student with a specific ID, assign the values from that object to these variables that are our instance variables, and then set the mode to delete. So our buttons here, we have a delete button, an update button, and when clicked, they respectively call the update and delete methods, which we talked about before. So let us run our application and see if this is going to work. Here are my students. I'm going to add a new student. Let me say Fred Jones and the School of Art, click on Insert. And here is Fred Jones. If I click on Fred Jones, it displays down here. I can change the school to music and go Update, and it updates it to music. I can click on it, click on Delete, and it's gone. So this is our server-side Blazor application. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in a future video.